Okay, so now we have 1700 times 100, so that is 170,000 light years across. And we see what is called our galaxy, the Milky Way, uh, which has the form of a disk, of a disk with the spiral arms. Uh, there is a central bulge here. Uh, the region above and below the disk is called a uh, halo. And it turns out that the halo of our galaxy is filled with these massive, numerous globular clusters that contain a large number of stars, a few hundred thousand to a few million stars. A side view of our own galaxy would uh, look something like this. Uh, the diameter of the Milky Way is about 100,000 light years. And uh, the sun's an hour distance from the center of the galaxy is about 30,000 light years, right? I'm not going to insist on precise number 28 or 27, uh, but roughly we'll round it to about 30,000 light years, right? And uh, you can see that it's the thickness of the disk is about 1,000 light years. It's much, much smaller uh, than the diameter. It's 100 times uh, smaller, the thickness of the disk, compared to the diameter. So that this disk of stars is uh, very uh, thin. Here is the central bulge and the halo regions be above and below the disk. Now, People realized uh, already in the 18th century that uh, uh, we live in a disk of stars. Uh, and let me explain how that was realized. If you are away from the city lights, from any kind of light pollution, it is often called, and look at a clear night sky, you see this diffuse band of light across the sky. Uh, that was called by ancient Greeks, Galaxia Kuklas, by uh, Romans, uh, Via Lactea, and translated into English, Milky Way. So since the ancient times, people have noticed this diffuse band of light across the uh, sky and named it uh, a Milky Way. And only in 1609, when Galileo, uh, for the first time, used the telescope to study the night sky, he realized that basically what it is, it consists of an enormous amount of stars that are so faint that we cannot resolve them as stars by just naked eye. We need a telescope to see that. But they are faint, which tells us that they are at a great distance from us. Because remember, if the light source is at a greater distance from you, it's going to appear to you to be fainter. Okay? So because they are so faint, uh, uh, one concludes that the stars in this band here uh, are at a great distance from us. And then in 18th century, two people, Thomas Wright and famous German uh, philosopher Immanuel Kant, proposed that what we see is because we live in the disk of stars. And the argument goes something like this. Imagine that the stars are uniformly distributed in our neighborhood. That is, you have roughly the same number of stars in any direction, right? So if that is so, then when you look at the night sky, you would see the same number of stars uh, regardless of the direction in which you look. Wherever you look, you would see the same number of stars. So the stars would appear to be distributed uniformly across the night sky. But if 
we live in a disk of stars, then we would see more stars when we view uh, the sky along the plane of the disk. It's just like me viewing you, the stars, right? If I look along the plane, I see a lot of stars. But if I look out of the plane, I see no stars, okay? So if you look in the plane of the disk, you see many stars. If you look out of the plane, you see a far less number of stars. So basically then, when you look in the direction of this diffuse band of light, you are looking in the plane of the Milky Way. In other directions, when you look in other direction, you look out of the plane of the Milky Way. Okay? So from this, uh, they concluded correctly that uh, the sun and the earth revolving around it uh, uh, belong to a, a disk of stars. So when you look along the plane of the disk, that corresponds to you looking at that uh, diffuse band of light. And when you look in another direction, you're looking out of the plane of the